I'm live. Hey everyone. Kristen here with another episode of Free Spirit Beating. I'm here on the Softlex Company Facebook page and YouTube channel. And we've been going live in the Great Beat Extravaganza today too, since this is a project that uh, is kind of fun and I'm doing it for a second time. I thought I would share it with our friends over in the Great Beat Extravaganza today as well. Hi, Maria. Hi, Sandy. Lovely to see you. Um, I've been saying this project is so nice. We're going to do it twice. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and take a look at making a sun catcher again today. I was on a sun catcher kick after our video last week. I had made one in preparation. I made one with you all last Monday. And then I made a third one after the video as I was cleaning up my desk. And, um, and I want to make more. So we're here again to take a look at some sun catchers. I would show you the examples that I've already made because I've made three of them. However, I've gifted them all already. So, so, um, so I asked Damien to please share our blog post with you that he put together last week to highlight the one that we made together and the other one that I already made so that you can see two other examples. Um, but yeah, I gave one to my mother-in-law for Mother's Day. I made one for my mom that still needs to get in the mail. It's packaged up. I just have to get to the post office. And then I also gave one away as a birthday gift. So it was like in one week, all three um, sun catchers found new homes. And so I need to make some more. Um, so we're going to do that together today. I think I've been playing with a little bit of a spiral shape. Last week, I showed you um, a circular shape and we beaded wire wrapped and beaded around the outside of it. And then I also showed how to make the diamond shape and we beat it around the outside of that as well. And today I think we'll play with um, this spiral shape and bead on the inside. So just a little bit of a variation on the sun catcher. Um, so you have some more ideas and techniques that you can try. I'm going to be using Softlex craft wire. I've got 24 gauge for the wire wrapping for the smaller, like where the beads are and you're wrapping around the, um, the shape, the frame. And then I have 16 gauge for the frame itself. And just a note about our 16 gauge is that we are discontinuing this gauge. Super sad. Um, just the way it is sometimes with how things get priced out and what makes sense. And um, we don't use this gauge all that much in jewelry making for the most part, but it is fabulous for doing things like sun catchers. So that's what I've been using. I think we have um, under 20 left on the gold, non-tarnish gold plated and under 20 left on the silver plated, which is what I'm gonna use today. And then we also have some in the copper color. And I think we have a little bit larger of a supply in the copper um, still available. But once they're gone, we're not bringing them back. And if you're watching this at a point in time when they are gone, you can use 18 gauge. That would be the next size um, that we are going to continue to carry because we use 18 gauge all the time. So you can use 18 gauge for this type of a project too. Let's see who is tuning in. Hi, Lydia. Hi, MC and Robin. Hello, Anne from California. Thank you for sharing that blog with everyone, Damien. So there it is at softlexcompany.com slash beating. 
hyphen blog and then um, DIY wire wrapped sun catcher using Softlex craft wire and beads. And you should also be able to put like DIY sun catcher in our search bar in on the website. And then you'll come up with searches that are product based and content based. Um, and you can switch it to content and should probably be able to find that one pretty easily because we don't have too many blogs on sun catchers at the moment. And then here's our link to go shop our craft wire, which is at softlexcompany.com, our craft wire section. And that's where you can find all of our colors, all of our gauges. Um, I'm also using round. I should say that, I guess, because it's 16 gauge and 24 gauge in our round. We do carry a square and a half round as well. And those are good for some other applications. But most of the time we use the round and that's what we have the most of. Maria says 16 gauge is great for bangles. Oh, good point. Good point, Maria. And believe me, if we could keep it, I would love to keep it because I was one of, it was my, my idea to get this product in because um, I like having a heavier gauge available uh, for certain projects and bangles is a great option. Um, but there's just some pricing issues with it that make it difficult for us to carry for our full range of customers. And so we decided um, earlier, I think we decided actually towards the end of last year that we're going to be discontinuing it. And I just haven't had a chance to use it and tell you all about that. So um, yeah, you know, it, it doesn't make sense on some level, Anne, but it does make sense in terms of the business aspect. So unfortunately, there are things that are beyond our control in certain times with particular products. And um, this is one of them that we unfortunately have to discontinue. So, hey, hi, Terry. Hi, Katie. Yeah, Terry says that is unfortunate. Everyone is experiencing supply chain issues, costs change, supplies are limited. Yeah, and there's just, unfortunately with that particular gauge that just puts us in like a different place, I guess, and we're not able to continue to carry it. Um, I'm sad to see it go, but we've got it right now and we don't sell it that quickly. So it might be around for a little while longer. So it's probably another reason why it's not sticking around. It's not really a gauge that is a co super common one for people to buy. Um, so it moves a lot slower. Mm, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. You got to, you got to trim, uh, trim it up. <laughs> and says, love the necklace you are wearing. Is there a tutorial for it? There is. This is the necklace I made during our great beat extravaganza spring fling event. And you can find um, the tutorial on the Softlex company YouTube channel. You can also find it on the blog. Um, so Damien, if you would be so kind to share our spring fling, um, video that Sarah and I just, just did. And actually the blog might even be better because I, I came back and I did some revisions on it. Um, so the blog link would probably be the best option for the spring fling. This is like the, has a little sunflower charm and I use the roll of beads, um, and the spacers and stuff. Pat says, what gauge? Missed it, 16 gauge. So I'm using 16 gauge today and 24 gauge craft wire. Um, the 16 gauge will eventually be phased out once we run out of some of our stock, unless something different happens. But as far as I know, as of right now, the end of last year, we decided it's a product that's gonna be phased out. So um, grab it while you can. <laughs> Hi, Roxanne. I'm so glad that you're able to catch me too and get those creative juices flowing. Thanks, Damien. It was called my Spring Blossoms Necklace Design. And you can find that on the beading blog and then also on the YouTube channel if you wanna check it out there too. Um, yeah, so today we're going to work on doing this spiral shape and beating in 
um, this little segment of a sun catcher. You can stop here and this would be very pretty in a window just as it is. Um, but I'm also gonna show you how to make your own jump rings because that was a suggestion on the last video. Um, it might've been you, Terry, I'm trying to remember who suggested it, but I went ahead and made some of my own big jump rings to connect the shapes in one of the sun catchers I made last week. And I thought that worked out really nice. So I'll share how to do that with you all too. Um, what's going on at Softflex Company? We've got uh, a celebration um, for Sarah going on. It is her birthday week. It was her birthday on Wednesday of, uh, of last week. So our current sale is spend $79 or more and you will get a free gift, a piece of jewelry that has been lovingly designed by our very own Sarah Ayler. She um, was born in 1979. So in the spirit of 79, we're offering um, that free gift for all of you. And just know it's just it's just a random mix. Sarah put a whole bunch of little baggies together and they're just going to pick one of the bags and put them in your order. If it's over $79, there's a range of necklaces and bracelets and earrings and everything is going to be different um, in your package. So we hope that you love your gift. And if you don't love it personally, maybe you would love to give it to someone else. Um, and yeah, so that's the sale that we've got going on. So super fun, really nice, and kind of a mystery gift, which is always something you guys like a lot. Um, what else do we have going on this week? We have Sarah will be back on Wednesday for her 3 o'clock um, beating video with all of you. So you can check in with us on Wednesday of this week at 3 p.m. Pacific. 6 p.m. Eastern and catch her on the Softflex Company Facebook page and YouTube channel. And then after that, we have our camp out Zoom meetup. So if you bought one of the camp out kits, I will be sending out an email probably by the end of today and then I'll resend a reminder on Wednesday. But we're going to get together on Wednesday of this week, which is May 24th at 4.30 p.m. Pacific time for the Zoom meetup with your kit. So, and you don't have to actually work from the kit. It just goes out to everyone that bought the camp out kit, but you're welcome to come and say hello and share whatever it is you're working on, or you're welcome to work with your camp out kit, um, or you're just welcome to pop in and say hi, because it's over Zoom, we'll get to see you. Um, Sarah will for sure be uh, hosting that. So um, what do we got here? Hi, Jessica, hi, Dawn. And Terry is sharing that she loves to make her own jump ring. She uses a plastic straw and makes a slew of them at a time. It is a lot of cutting, yeah. What's nice about the straw is that you've got a nice long space so you can just keep keep wrapping and then cut it back up. Oh, Anessa's birthday twins with Sarah. Happy birthday, Anessa. And oh, true. That's what, exactly what I was thinking. A hard plastic reusable straw or probably one of those stainless steel straws would work. Reusable one would work really well, too. Oh, you tried the last sun catcher, but you did not have strong wire. So it is a bit droopy. What gauge did you end up using for the frame? Um, if you have thinner wire, I would suggest definitely work hardening it with something like the wire whacker and um, really kind of smash that down a bit to make the frame a little bit harder. But I do think you probably have to be like 18 gauge Maybe you can get away with 20 gauge, but um, I would think 18 gauge would probably be be okay if it's too much thinner. I can see it being a little droopy, but droopy's still pretty. <laughs> Hi, Patsy. All right. So let's go ahead and go down to my beading table here. And I just pulled out some of these 
beads. I am going through some of my old um, mystery design kits for these projects, which has been really fun to do because I kind of keep them, um, I tend to keep them all together from each kit, anything that I didn't get a chance to use. I keep it in that baggie and store it away. And um, these are going back, I think this one was back to 2021. Um, does anyone recognize what kit this might be? But it's been a fun way to go and revisit some of my beading kits and then all of the colors are nicely coordinated together for me already and then they have some fun little extras at times for like charms and stuff um but here's a hint this one was in this particular kit this little charm here Art says, Art Save says, maybe too many beads. That could be it too. Maybe they were a little bit, maybe the beads were too heavy and you needed to space them out a little bit more. <laughs> oh, you did use 18 gauge, but it was a cheaper brand. I see. Yeah. And I think you probably do need to work hard in it a little bit, depending on how you are um adding the beads i feel like something like this the beads kind of help the shape stay stay in shape if that makes any sense um because it just adds to it but depending on how it's laid out it could kind of pull on it and says she uses a wooden dowel to make jump rings you can get different sizes with a different size of dowels great tip I would be scared too. Terry says, I have a spool of 10 or 12 gauge that I'm legit scared to use. It is rather immovable. <laughs> yes, I went to a arts fair um, a month or so ago and someone had these beautiful patio sun catchers, really large ones. And she was using like super, like probably 10 gauge. And um, I was discussing how difficult <laughs> That must be on her hands. <laughs> and she agreed. Yes, it was a it was the bee theme. So it was the bee kind kit that we did back in 2021. Um, we have some videos that we did with Kay Goss of Stars Beads with that kit. And it was a really fun one. Lots of yellows and kind of honey colored with these pops of turquoise in there. So I pulled that mix out to play with. And then I also grabbed this mix because I might want to add some more of these turquoise colors in, in this sun catcher. So this was another kit. This was our nutcracker kit. And these had such pretty, um, wait, was this nutcracker? Oh no, I think this was retro Christmas. I think this was retro Christmas and these had some really fun colors in there. So speaking of our mystery kits, our current mystery kit is under the sea and we have got, um, I think we sold out 85% of that kit. So we're pretty close to having that one go bye-bye. So if you haven't grabbed that one, it is a beautiful, ocean themed under the sea kit for summer. And we're going to be opening that one and revealing it the end of May. Um, so check that out. We always have a kit every month that we reveal the kit on the last Wednesday. And that is when we also um, launch the newest kit. So every month you can get in on our mystery design challenge. Sarah and I work really hard and um, very closely to curate all of those kits for you. I know some of you have helped in the theming the last year. I think Maria, for sure, we've used a couple of yours. You have another one that you suggested um, coming up. 
<laughs> the camp out kit was loosely um, a suggestion by Maria because she had suggested um, the natural parks. And so we kind of thought, oh, a camping, camping kit would be fun, like the park service. And that was, we looked at the park surface logo and things for some of the color inspiration. And then you have another one coming up. I don't think I can spill the beans just yet, but I think you'll know once we announce it. <laughs> it'll be um, it'll be our kit for the Great Beat Extravaganza Midsummer Market. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, this is all I have left on my craft wire 16 gauge. So I'm just kind of playing with this. Let me see how long this piece is. I'm gonna cut 20 inches and see where that goes. So if anyone else has any fun ideas for upcoming kits, you can always send us a message. And if it's not something we've done before, um, we have a little document Sarah and I keep, like a rolling, I idea list and um, you never know. When is the midsummer market, Maria is asking. I don't know, Maria. <laughs> that might be a question for Damien to go help because I it's not on my radar <laughs> of when it is. I know we announced it um, at the end of the last at the end of the last one. So it should be on the Great Beat Extravaganza Facebook group um, right at the top. And I am using a can. To wrap around my craft wire. Or, or I should say wrap my craft wire around the can. And I like how this can has like these little grooves in here. So I can get that right in there and give myself a nice round shape to start with. Thanks, Terry. Terry says it's July 22nd and 23rd. I better put that on my calendar. <laughs> I think, um, I think I'm going to have a surprise guest with me too. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay. What other tools do I want to get here? I want to get a pair of round nose pliers and a pair of chain nose pliers out. And I have our Multi-step plier would be great. Here's a cutter. I will need that. Um, where is it? Here's my nylon jaw pliers that I use to make, to straighten out my wire before I put it on the can. And where the heck, where did I put my multi, ah, there it is. Okay, and here's my multi-step, um, multi-mandrel plier. And I'm gonna use this one to make the jump rings. So you could make probably, I don't know, maybe four or five or so at a time on this little space, but I'll show you how I make those. And then you can always do something like a dowel or a reusable straw, as was suggested, um, if you wanted to make more than you have the space for on here. But this is great if you just wanna make a couple and you have all of these great different sizes to work with. So I'm gonna decide which one is my outside and which one is my inside. I'm gonna just trim off this little wiggly bit here. There's a little, and I'm using the flat side of the flush cutter 
towards my project so that I'll have a nice clean cut. I'm going to hold it so it doesn't fly away and just trim that off. And maybe I'll do this big loop at the top first. So to make this loop here, I used the largest mandrel. I'm just going to place my wire inside my tool and rotate all around to create that nice big loop. Come in and tighten it up a little bit. Just like so. And then I want to take this end here, and I think I'll just trim this off too since it's got a weird bend. Just kind of get that out of there. So I want to take this part here and create the little loop on the inside. You could use a regular pair of round nose pliers, or you can use your, your mandrel and then choose one of the smaller sizes to create your loop. I think I'll do the second, second size. You can make it bigger or smaller depending on your aesthetic. So now we've got our two loops on there. And then I just kind of did this part by hand. This one looks like it's going to have extra swirlies, which might be interesting or might be more difficult. I don't know. Um, I have a couple of these from my wig jig that I can take pull out too, just in case I want to use them. So I think what I did here was I had less wire. So I think what I'll do, just so I don't make my design too complicated, is I'm going to trim off this spot here and then come back and make my little loop here instead. And now I can use these little wig jig pieces, or you can kind of do it with your hand too, to help guide your size a little bit more. And I'm holding these, eventually these are gonna get wired together. So I'm holding these pieces up so that I can See how it's going to go. And I used the big one, then I went down to the middle one. And I'm just playing with what I want size wise. So now this is the smallest. These are called super pegs. And you usually use them on the jig itself, but I thought, mm, why not? Why not use them?
Well, that seems good. I like that. This will be a little wider of a piece than this one, unless I want to tighten it up. And then you can kind of pull it in even more. But I think I'll connect it right about here where there's like a little bit of a bump. So these round things are called super pegs and they actually sit in a wig jig like this, but I was just using them freehand to kind of play with my shape a little bit. But if you're making round pieces, they're really great for placing inside of the jig and we have them for the this is the Wig Jake Olympus light. So these fit into there. And then we also have them in another size for the other size jig. So you can check them out at softlexcompany.com um, and look in the Wig Jig section. So before I go any further, I'm gonna go ahead and put my, my shape onto my wire whacker and this will shake a minute and it's also going to be kind of loud so I'm going to go ahead and mute myself. Okay, earthquake is over, I am back. And I just wanted to give it a little bit of, um, of a whack to kind of hold it in place. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten up these two wires here, doing a little wrapping just like so to hold those in place. So I'm gonna use 24 gauge of the craft wire Yeah, so wig jig is used for shaping wire more easily. And I show how to make like a triangle shape in last week's video using the wig jig. We have a whole playlist on the Softlex Company YouTube channel on how to use wig jig. All right, I'm gonna pull off a bunch of wire. I did my arm span from arm to arm. And I'll measure this out just to, you can always add wire to your shape too, but it's nice to start with a good amount so you don't have to. 30. About 55 inches is what I cut off. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pinch these together in my left hand or your right hand, whichever is more comfortable for you, where I want them to connect, which I'm gonna do right where this little bump is. I'm gonna loosen it for a second so that I can get this wire wrapped on. And I'm just gonna wrap it around maybe four times. Take my chain nose pliers and squish those wraps nice and tight. 
and then just cut off this little end. And then go ahead and tuck in that, that little piece. Okay, so now that my wrapping wire is connected to my frame, I'm gonna go ahead again and pinch where I want it to, to hold together. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it and I only had the wrapping on the top wire. Now I'm gonna take the wrapping and go from the top to the bottom so that it's connecting those two pieces of wire together. And I'll do one, I'll do it two, and then I'll do one more. So I'll do three times. So now you can see I've got the four wraps on the first piece and now the three wraps on the two pieces that I'm combining together. So now I'm gonna loosen my grip a little bit and actually um, kind of pull this bottom piece away from the top a little because I wanna go in between here on my next wraps. I'm creating this um, this little like three wraps out, two wraps on one, three wraps on the two, two wraps on one pattern. So I'm gonna come up from the back, find my end piece around here somewhere and poke it through the center between these two frame pieces. And I'm gonna slowly, patiently pull it through because there's a lot of wire. I don't want to um, snap it or get it too twisted. So if you go slowly, then you can grab whenever it starts to wrap around. And one of the things that was neat is I took a class at Craftcation last month and she actually wrapped the wire around on a bobbin like a kumihimo bobbin and that was a great way to not have like all of this wire hanging out so now i just did one loop one wrap through the center here and on that top frame and i'm going to do that two more times I'm just gonna pull it towards me so that I can get the wire through there. And if you need a little help, you can use your chain nose pliers to pull that down. Are you able to see it a little bit? There you go. I'm gonna do one more on just the top and then I'm gonna grab both of the frames again. I'll go through the center. And now I'm gonna go around both frames again. So pulling it right through the middle to catch both pieces. And we'll do that another three times. And then you'll start to feel like, okay, this shape is, is staying in place. And you can decide how many more times you want to go and do that process. I'll probably do it at least one more I'll go through the center of the two. To create 
create this pattern. And this might be a little bit easier to kind of tuck it, tuck it through now that we have some space and then just grab it and pull it through. I'll do that one more time. Tuck it through. And now I'm going to go around both again. Three times. And each time I just kind of move my finger, my left hand kind of over it to hold it in place. Okay, so I've got it upside down. It really goes this way, but it just felt more comfortable to be wrapping it from the bottom up. Maybe one more time, and then I'll add beads. So I'll go through the center just because it feels a little bit like it could use um, some more stability. I'm going between the two frames for three wraps and then gathering the two frames for three wraps. And now I'm just gonna do a couple more to finish it out with the wrapping. Mostly I just wanna to get to a spot where I can add a bead in between easily. And you can always kind of pull this swirl out a little bit too, to create a little bit more space. All right, let's see if I got a bead that will fit in there. What are some of my smaller beads? That one's still a little too big. I think this one will fit. So we'll start with some of these little ones. Once you're ready to add a bead, wrangle your shape <laughs> in place. Slide your bead on to your wire and then you'll tuck it I'll even kind of move that out a little bit. So that I could tuck my bead right in the center there. And I'm gonna wrap around the frame. And I'm gonna give it like two wraps before I add another bead so that it really kind of anchors it down there. All right, one bead in 
And now you can see I've got a little bit more space. So maybe I'll see if that other bead will fit next. A little bit larger of a bead. Pull that down and then do the same thing. I'm gonna wrap around two or three times. Now, another thing to note is you are gonna to have to make sure that there is the good amount of space happening um, before you put another bead in, because if you wrap and you're really close to this one and your next bead is a larger size, it's not gonna work. So like if you were to put this bead here, the hole is all the way over here. So you can either decide to wrap um, all the way down to where you can put the hole, or you can make like a large gap. And that again is more like aesthetic. So if I made a large gap, I would just sort of swirl it and leave a little gap of space. Until I'm in a better position to add that next bead. Does that make sense? So now I can add that bead there is where the hole is. So I needed to kind of have this little gap of space from where I wrapped. And then go ahead and connect it to the other side of the frame. And once it's on there, think about, okay, what do we want to do next? <clears throat> now I'm getting quite a bit more space. So maybe I want to do a few beads. Or maybe I want something that's getting kind of larger. Oh, how funny is this? These two are stuck together. Huh. Huh. Does the hole run through it? I think it does. Well, I'm gonna try and put those together right there. I think the hole runs through them both. <laughs> They're totally stuck. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave a little bit of a gap again. So there's That's where I ended the wire and I added a little bit of a gap and I'm gonna loop through. twice. I don't know if you have to do it twice, but it just kind of felt right to me. I'm going to tighten those two up. And let's see if this will actually go through both of them. Oh my gosh, it does. That is too funny. They are stuck together. And it went through both. Oh, it's a little bit big for the space, so I had to move that out of the way. And I don't know if I like that. Maybe this goes in the next one. I want it a little thinner. Than that. <laughs> I know a gift from the glass bead universe. I've never seen that before. Have you seen that before, Terry? 
<laughs> I was surprised that the hole went straight through both of them because I was thinking for sure that um, it'd be in different directions. Okay, so here's this one, which feels a little loose. So I want to add a little something on each side of it. Maybe I'll add one of these tiny ones from the first and then that. Let's do two on either side and see if that fits. I could always take, nope, that one's too big now. So I'm just gonna take this one off and leave the little one. And then go ahead and wrap. I find this part really kind of fun, like the spatial activity of finding the beads that will fit, kind of like a puzzle. So I think now I'll create a little bit of a gap again. And now I'm gonna try those beads stuck together in this next spot. Yeah, you know, I feel like I have seen it sometimes in like a plastic bead mix. Okay, that's good. So that fits and I could just kind of push this one back a little bit to make it tighter. And now wrap this one. I love this turquoise with the yellow. So pretty. I like yellow with so many colors, but turquoise and yellow or teal is pretty special. Let's try and fit this one in next. So I think I will use that there and what other colors? These might this one might be pretty it's kind of a matte and shiny. I probably won't finish this with you because I'm looking at the time and I want to show you how to do a jump ring. But let's go a little bit further. I look like I can use another little one in there. It's nice to have a variety of sizes available when you sit down to do a project like this so that you can have bigger pieces and little pieces to fill in those spaces. As I go, I'm just sort of adjusting if I want to change the shape of my inner inner swirl at all while you still can. Kind of play with that. Let's get another turquoise color in here. I 
have this one, which I think will be perfect. Maybe I'll put that together. That's fun. Wrap this one up. So I think you get the process of what's happening here. Let me try and move this wire kind of out of my way. And you would just keep going all the way. I decided to stop here and leave a little opening um, just because I was kind of <laughs> I was kind of nervous about how to go about continuing on but you could go in between these little gap spaces if you wanted to keep going around. Um, but they do start to get very heavy too. So that's something to also think about where you might wanna stop just for the weight of it and the look of it. And if you decide that this curl got a little too long and you wanna trim it and make a loop, you can always do that too. So, you know, don't be afraid to make adjustments as you go and, change your shape a little bit depending on what's working so i'm going to go back to this little piece i cut off and i'm just going to trim off that loop so i've just got a little piece of wire here that is about three inches the well, first thing i'm going to do is make sure each end is flat so i want the flush side to be facing towards my piece and then this one's flat and cut that so that they are flat. So what I mean is if you were to hold your tool this way and cut it this way, that's not flat. See how it's got like a little, a little angle there? you want each side to be flat to start just kind of a nice thing to get in the habit of doing and then I'm gonna hold one end with my chain nose plier and I'm going to straighten it with my nylon jaw pliers And this is the 18, I mean the 16 gauge that I have here. But the process would be the same even if you're using a smaller gauge. And I'm gonna make a nice big ring. I think it's really nice when I'm using a tool like this that I can decide on keeping my rings kind of consistent. So I'm gonna make a ring this size, just like I did for the loop at the top. And that way my finished piece will have all consistent size loops. And so to make that loop at the top, I use the largest size of my tool mandrel. I'm going to go ahead and place my wire um, kind of flush in there. So there's no wires peeking out. See it right there on the end and then go around. And I'm also going to move it. I'm actually going to move it down towards the bottom and go ahead and make your circle. And when you come back to where you were in the beginning, you can keep going if you want to make more than one. Just kind of scoot it all the way around to make a little spiral. And I'm just going to keep going until I don't have any more wire. And it makes sort of a 
a little spring or split ring looking thing. So now what I want to do is I want to trim it all with my cutters. Um, I'm not sure if it'll cut all three. Let's give it a try. Oh, good, it did. So I was able to cut all three. And it only really made two jump rings because little bits and pieces of that other loop kind of come, break off. Now, what you'll see here is when you make that jump ring, because the cutter has one side flush and one side that makes an angle, you have to come back and flatten the angle side. So if you look at my jump ring here, the opening on the right, the end of the wire on the right is flush and the one on the left is angled. So I'm gonna bring my cutter up with the flat side towards the angled one. And I'm just gonna go just to the edge as close as I could go and just trim it to make it flush. So now I have a jump ring that's slightly open and it has two flush ends. And then you can use two pairs of pliers, like two chain nose, a chain and a bent. This one's a chain and a flat. And then you'll just wiggle it like you normally would with a jump ring. Um, you could also work harden these. It's pretty hard actually. I'm having a, let me see if I can get a hold of this better. You can also work harden these if you're using a thinner gauge, but with the 16 gauge, I didn't feel like I had to work harden it. They're pretty tough. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. Um, I've got the one side is flush already and I'm just gonna trim up the other side, make that flush. And then using my pliers, I'm gonna wiggle it closer together. And then if I wanna use this, so if I have multiple shapes, I can take, in this case, I use the jump ring to add a little dangle on the bottom but you can also add it to connect shapes together. So if I wanted to connect, say I wanted to connect this shape and this shape together, just put it there, close it up. And now you've got a really nice connection that's the same size as your other loops and nice and consistent. And you can do it from either side. So I can either do it from the top or I can, if this was finished, I could do it from the bottom part and just have it be there too. So it can connect in either, in either direction. So that's a nice way, that tool is great for making your consistent loops, your consistent size of your jump rings. And it's good if you're just making a couple of jump rings. If you wanted to make, say, a whole fleet of jump rings at once, then I think the suggestions of having a dowel or a reusable straw are great options for that. Let's see what comments I missed as I was, as I was making. Terry says she really likes the spiral. No, I always love spirals. I'm kind of spirally obsessed, especially this year. Look at this ring I picked up just, just last uh, week because I am like spirals and portals are my symbol of the year. So I have been looking for spirals and portals everywhere I go. It would also make a super fun pendant. It would. I mean, these, these are a decent size pendant, but hey, I'm not afraid of big pendants. And you can use the same technique in a smaller version too. You don't have to go this large. You can make it smaller using the same idea. Oh, I agree, Lorraine. Lorraine says the empty space looks like a Nautilus shell. 
So cool. Such a good thing to point out. Terry says you can use acrylic beads if you use it as a pendant. That would make it a lot lighter. Yeah, the glass beads will get kind of heavy as you keep going. Oh, thank you, Kaliti. What a treasure sun catcher. Thanks. Hello, Maria. Hi, Cindy. Oh, could you also do this in a yin and yang? Oh, that would be interesting so that you can go up part of the way and then change it and do it the other way. Create a little, maybe even have like a little loop in there if you want to, like a little uh, swoosh. Cindy agrees. She was going to say that they would also make beautiful pendants. Oh, you're welcome, Maria. Thank you guys for joining me today. Anne loves it too. Thanks, Anne. Thanks for joining me today. I am totally hooked on making these sun catchers right now. Um, <laughs> I... I think I want to do one in rainbow for my own patio. Um, I haven't decided yet like if I might do every section like a different shape or repeat shapes, but how fun would that be to kind of have each section go up the rainbow? Or you could even start here and then do like a rainbow all the way through. So I'm thinking of pulling out my beads in rainbow colors and seeing uh, seeing what I want to create for my own patio. And then this one here, shh, don't tell her, but I think I'm planning to make this one for our friend Sarah for her birthday. You guys all know she loves yellow and she loves turquoise. Um, and she also loves red. So I could also pop in a little red in here maybe and see how that looks. Um, but I'm going to give this one to our friend Sarah when I'm done because I think these colors are just so her but shh, don't tell her don't ruin the surprise <laughs> hopefully I'll get it in the mail like sometime before three months from now because <laughs> I am the worst <laughs> Maria says yes rainbow I haven't used my rainbow packs from last year oh yeah if you purchased when we did those check glass rainbow packs. Oh my gosh. Perfect opportunity to go through and grab um, some beads and make yourself a fun rainbow sun catcher or pendant. And I would say it's also kind of a fun way to use those beads that maybe um, wouldn't be a bead you might use in a piece of jewelry, like not your favorite for jewelry, but great for something like this. Uh, it's nice to make sure there's lots of beads that have a little sparkle on there and some um, some clear beads or transparent beads mixed in with more um, opaque beads. This way the sun can catch it, the light can catch it. Do you guys see that I put these little square flowers in here? I had a couple of them left from my spring fling kit. So I added those in there. I think they're so fun to have all of those different shapes. And then of course, a big sparkly focal bead is great to kind of hang down or tassels or bells. I have a little bell that I could put on here. Um, so many fun things. A great way to use some of those special beads that you, um, that you have in your stash and you haven't yet. Add little charms on the bottom. So cute. So thank you all again for joining me. Be sure to check out the blog from last week if you want to see the other designs of sun, sun catchers I did too, because those were kind of different. So it gives you a lot of opportunity to, um, to mix and match the shapes or the styles. Um, and then you can come up with fun things on your own too. Be sure to share it in our SoftLex VIB studio group if you make any, because I would love to see. Yeah, totally. Robin says, great for a wind chime base. Yep, super cool. Yes, that's what I love. Khalidi says, all the beautiful orphan beads that can live in a sun catcher. Yeah, 
it's fun to be able to pull out. Um, and that's why I'm like, I've got, I've got over here like a big bag of all of the past kits. This was, I have them by year. So this is 2021. And um, I was just sort of going through and seeing what beads I can pull out to create sun catchers with. It's like a whole new excitement of going through all those uh, leftovers. <laughs> Join us on Wednesday to see what Sarah's going to make. She'll be back. If you missed her last week, she was on vacation for her birthday, but she will be back on Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time um, on the SoftLex Company Facebook page and YouTube channel. And then we'll have our Zoom on Campout. So stay tuned for that email. They'll be coming from me at SoftLex Company. And um, it's not recorded in that case. The Zooms are just sort of like an extra fun hangout that we started to do a couple months back. And it's just, if you can make it live, great, but we don't record them. So there's no like checking in on it later. So it's just sort of something fun. If you're around and you want to join us, um, you can come bring some beading projects to work on. And if the link will go out to everyone that purchased Camp Out last month. And then for next month, we'll do it again for Under the Sea and the link will go out to everyone that purchased Under the Sea. And we're 85% sold out right now. So grab that kit if you haven't yet. Um, we also have a mermaid party kit that's coming up in June. And I think we're like 60% sold out on that one. So check that out at softlexcompany.com. And I will see you back here again next Monday for another episode of Free Spirit Feeding. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, and Terry says, yes, thank you, Kristen. I love this sort of free form creativity. That is sort of, that is how I came up with the name for my, my quote unquote show, <laughs> Free Spirit Beating, because I really adore free form creativity. And when you can just kind of play around and see what happens without too much of a plan. Um, those are some of my favorite crafty projects. So thanks for, uh, thanks for kind of mirroring that back to me, Terry. I appreciate it. Um, hope you all have a wonderfully creative week and I will catch you all again next Monday. Lots of love. Bye.